Today we are going to explore the beauties of Map Shaper. Um, this is a map mapping tool. You can use it to inspect your files. Um, you can also use it to minimize the file size and you can use it to explore what data you might have behind your files. So let's say somebody has sent me this lovely uh, Houston area realty uh, home sales data. I do not really know what's inside of it and uh, I am it's a GeoJSON so I can't just open it with Excel. So what I'm going to do is navigate to mapshaper.org um, and when I do that you should see this landing page that is prompting me to import a file. Super simple. You can drag and drop. You can click to um, select where on your computer the file is. I'm going to just show you the drag and drop functionality. And look at that already. It's in there. Amazing. I can zoom in. I can look at what's going on. I can add a base map because this is just a floating shape for right now. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I'm in Houston. That's good to know. <laughs> I can zoom way in, I can look at streets, I can even toggle to a satellite view so I can see, oh, there's the Toyota Center. I can zoom back out, kind of see my shapes. Um, but maybe I want to see actually what's behind. I'm going to toggle again so I can see the outlines. Uh, but maybe I'm curious to see, you know, is there any information behind each of these shapes that I might be able to work with? Um, if you see over here on the left hand, oh, that's the right, if you see over here on the right hand side, we've got um, inspect features. I just hovered over this little um, pointer and it shows me I can inspect my features. If I click on that, then as I hover, I'm not even clicking, as I just hover over these shapes, I can see all of this information over here. So it looks like we've got 2010 to 2020 maybe 21 uh, median sales price for homes in this area and I can see that the name of the what the name of the areas are up here um, looks like the Houston Association of Realtors even has like a little URL for each of the areas in case maybe I want to learn some more facts about each one look at that um, I also have a couple of other data points here. It looks like median price per square foot. Um, awesome. So one uh, another thing I kind of noticed when I looked in my files is um, 2.7 megabytes. If I want to load this into Data Wrapper, Data Wrapper has a 2 megabyte cutoff. So I wouldn't be able to upload this into Data Wrapper if I wanted to visualize it for one of my stories. Again, we're back in Map Shaper. Map Shaper can help us with that. If we go over to Simplify, um, there are a lot of different options here. Usually I click on Prevent Shape Removal. You can get more information about what each of them does by hovering here over the question marks. But um, I like to prevent shape removal. And then um, usually I'll just kind of like leave it on the method that it is already pre-selected on unless I have a reason for um, selecting something else. And then whenever I hit apply, you can see this settings bar has shown up. This means uh, this percentage here is 100% of the original uh, size of the file. And you can see as I drag it, my shapes begin to change and look a little bit um you know modern art there but uh obviously as with most things in life the uh sweet spot is somewhere in the middle um what i like to do actually is just take any of my layers or my base maps off um and then i want to stop inspecting these features because that's kind of distracting me i like to zoom in on something that looks like it has and i'm just zooming in on my computer here um a little bit of variety so I can kind of see I got like jagged jaggedy parts here you know so I'm gonna go back up to simplify click on that um, and I can see what it looks like at a hundred percent basically what the system's doing at this point is imagine this is a line and each time it takes a little turn it creates a new point a new data point 
makes the file bigger. So you can see as your, the most simple you can be is a straight line. And that's what these are. This is turning this beautiful squiggly guy into a complete straight line and therefore rem minimizing the, <laughs> the uh, file size. But I am gonna drag this until I really start seeing some major changes. And again, I'm at 2.7. I only need to get down to two. I don't need to decrease this too, too much. So I'm gonna say like right about there feels good to me. Um, and then after that, once I feel happy with how I've minimized my shape, I can come up here, I can say export. And now I see I have all these different options I can export to a shapefile, a GeoJSON, which is what Data Wrapper likes, um, a KML, which is what my maps, my, uh, Google My Maps likes, um, a CSV, if really what I want to do is just grab the data behind this, open it in, in a spreadsheet maybe, or if I want to, you know, export this to Data Wrapper, maybe the shapes I, I need are already in Data Wrapper, all I need is the data. Lots of different options here. I'm gonna stick with GeoJSON for now. I'm gonna say export, and then I can see um, it's got my file name. I'm gonna save it in the same place of my, as my original file, and I'm just gonna put the name simple at the end to indicate that this is the same file, but just simplified. And let's save that and then it's it saves it as a dot json but that is it is the same as our geo json that's okay um, and now i see my original file 2.7 and my simplified file one megabyte love it and that's uh the basics of map shaper